a lot of people look at you and see Bernie Madoff. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's who I am at, at all, but I understand why they're saying that. People lost money, and people lost a lot of money. And I mean, at the end of the day, look, there's a question of what happened and why, and who did what, um, what caused the, the meltdown. And I think that is, reads very differently, right? When you, when you look at the classic Bernie Madoff story, there was no real business there. The whole thing, as I understand it, I think, was, was just one, one big Ponzi scheme, right? FTX, that was a real business. He was at the top of the cryptocurrency world. 30-year-old billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried. You just need FTX. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. Super Bowl ads. Yep. Naming yep. stadiums. Crypto Steph Curry. Stadium. Giselle Bunchen. We did a lot of things to try to, uh, to try and bolster our reputation, to try and, you know, help our brand. But in the early morning hours of November 11th, it all came to an end when FTX filed for bankruptcy and Bankman-Fried stepped down as CEO amid reports of FTX customer funds being used to pay Alameda Research creditors. This confirmed by former Alameda CEO Carolyn Ellison during an early November video meeting with employees. Alameda, the crypto trading firm also founded by Bankman-Fried. ABC News reached out to Carolyn Ellison for comment, but has not heard back. One yeah. of the reasons FTX went bankrupt is because FTX deposits yep. were used to pay Alameda's creditors. Carolyn Ellison said you knew about that. Is that true? You know, best I can tell, uh, Alameda did have a big position open on, on FTX. Um, that position, uh, I think, was, you know, very over collateralized uh, a year ago. There is a, a total market collapse and, sp you know, specifically a large correlated collapse in its assets, you know, over the last month and to some extent over the last year that, I, uh, you know, threatened that position quite a bit. And I think that's, you know, as best I understand, a lot of what happened there. I, I am no cryptocurrency expert. I'm no finance expert. Yep. But I don't think you answered my question. I was asking, yep. did you know that FTX deposits were used to pay off Alameda creditors? Uh, I don't know of FTX deposits being used to pay off Alameda creditors. Are you, uh, which, which creditors are you referring to? Carolyn Ellison said that you all knew that these funds were used, were put into Alameda. They were the funds owned by your depositors. So I can't speak for who knew what. You know, a lot of the customers on FTX did have, you know, borrowers either, you know, in dollars or Bitcoin or, or euros. But as you know, the FTX terms of service yep. tell the people who signed up, none of the digital assets in your account are the property of or shall be or may be loaned to FTX trading. But you're saying that happened. My understanding is a few things happened. The first is there is a margin trading facility on FTX by which users can lend out funds, by which other users borrow funds. And so there are explicit cases where there is, you know, margin extend, where there is borrow lending. If yep. Alameda is borrowing the money that belongs yep. to FTX depositors, that's a bright red line, isn't it? There are a lot of cases where that's actually explicitly part of the programs and that are but happening. But not, not here. Here it says that the digital assets may not be loaned to FTX trading. They can't be loaned out. They can't be loaned. I. Uh, there existed a borrow lending facility on FTX, and and I think that's probably covered. I, I don't remember exactly where, but somewhere else in the terms of service. But they'd have to approve of that. They're saying they didn't approve of it here. They're so saying you approved of it. If you rewind to you know the beginning of FTX, um, where you know some customers were you know, uh, I think in line with sort of existing relationships that, that they've had, at least in some cases, wiring money straight to Alameda Research in order to trade on FTX. So on you FTX. do know and you did know that FTX deposits were being funneled to Alameda? So I was vaguely aware that that was how some wires were being sent in the first place. Um, Didn't that set off alarm bells in your head? So there are a lot of people who are involved in that process. And look, 
I really deeply wish that I had taken like a lot more responsibility for understanding what the details were of what was going on there. I knew that legal was involved. I knew that other groups at the company were involved, that you know, there were agreements drafted up. But you're ultimately responsible. And ultimately, absolutely. Like I, look, I should have been on top of this. And I feel really, really bad and regretful that I wasn't. And a lot of people got hurt. And that, that's on me. Here's what Mark Cuban has to say about that. Yep. He said, if I were him, I'd be afraid of going to jail for a long time. At the end of the day, you know, it's not my call what happens, and uh, the world will judge me as it will. Are you worried about going to jail? There are a lot of things that are worrying me right now. Um, and, you know, as best as possible, I'm trying to focus on what I can do going forward to be helpful and, you know, let whatever you know, regulatory and legal processes are happening play out as they will. I, I do want to move on, but just, just finally on yep. this. This is really a yes or no question. Yep. Carolyn Ellison says you knew that FTX funds were being funneled to Alameda. Did you know that? I knew that there is an open margin position there and that that involved I know, but that's not what I'm borrow. asking. <laughs> if she's in court and you're in court and she's under oath and you're under yep. oath and you're asked, did you know that these funds were being funneled to Alameda, what is your answer? I did not know that there is any improper uh, use of customer funds. You also took out a $1 billion loan. What was that for? That was generally for reinvesting in the company. That was not for you know, consumption. I, you know, to my knowledge, I have basically nothing left. Um, you know, basically everything I had was invested in the business. I expect I'm going to have nothing at the end of this. I, I think I had $100,000 left in my bank account last I checked, and I, I think I have, you know, uh, one credit card working with that right now. Earlier this summer, you thought you had, what, $32 billion? Probably 20 but uh, a whole lot more than I do now. I can't imagine what it feels like to go from $20 billion to $100,000. Yeah. It's, I mean... It's been a really, it's been a really humbling fall in, in a lot of ways. How do you explain the failure? Was it an inattention, arrogance? Um, it's a good question. Was it unethical? Some part of it was just literal distraction. I sh really should have spent some time each day taking a step back and saying, what are the most important things here, right? And like, how do I have oversight of those and make sure that I'm not losing track of those. And frankly, I did a pretty incomplete job at that. I spent a lot less time looking at assets and looking at balances and positions because that's not where revenue came from. And so it, I wasn't seeing as a core business driver, obviously it was a core risk. And that was a huge mistake of mine to not think more about that. You said one of your great it's, talents in a podcast was managing risk. That's right. And well, it's obviously wrong. Well, I, it's, I think that there is something maybe even deeper wrong there, which was I wasn't even trying. Like, I wasn't spending any time or effort trying to manage risk on FTX. Trying, like, and that, that obviously... That's that a stunning a admission. What? That's a pretty stunning admission. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know what to say. Like, what happened happened. And, like, if I had been, if I had been spending an hour a day thinking about risk management on FTX, I don't think that would have happened. I think I, I stopped working as hard for a bit. You know, honestly, if I look back on myself, I think I got a little cocky. I made more than a little bit. Um, and I think part of me, like, you know, felt like, um, like we'd made it. As I said, that was a pretty stunning admission. The whole job of the head of a firm like that is managing risk. Risk, risk exactly. And he wanted to, he reached out. He Desperately. Wanted to, he, he went against the, the advice of his lawyers. Uh, he thanked me at the end. We, like I said, we talked for close to two hours, and you saw he didn't flinch no. from the tough questions, but it, even though he had a hard time at times answering them. And, you know, he just wants to speak his mind. Now,